we're just going to review bacteriophages. So remember there's two different types of bacteriophages. We have the virulent bacteriophages. And remember, virulent means severe. So they're going to do the lytic cycle. And remember that they're going to infect the bacterial cell and make new virus right away and then lace the bacterial cell and kill it. So that's not very nice. So these virulent phages, they just do the lytic cycle. And then the other type of bacteriophage, these are the temperate phages. Temperate means moderate. So they're a little bit nicer to the bacterial cells at first. So they can do the lysogenic cycle and then also the lytic cycle. So in the lysogenic cycle, remember that they insert their viral DNA into the bacterial chromosome as the prophage. And then they just stay in the bacterial chromosome for long periods of time until they sense that the environment's not good and the bacterial cell's in trouble, it's gonna die. And then the prophage will cut itself out of the bacterial chromosome and then start the lytic cycle and make new virus and lice the bacterial cell and then go find a new host cell to infect. And then just make sure you know the vocabulary words here. So remember in the lysogenic cycle, the prophage, that's just the viral DNA that's inserted into the bacterial chromosome. And then the lysogen, that's just the bacterial cell that has the viral DNA that's inserted into it. So let's just take a look at some pictures here. We've got the bacteriophage attaching to its specific receptor on the bacterial cell, and then it ejects its viral DNA into the bacterial cell. And if this is a virulent bacteriophage, it's just gonna do this lytic cycle, and it just immediately goes and directs the production of new phages, and then it lyses the bacterial cell to release the newly made virus, and that kills the bacterial cell. And then the newly made virus will then go find a new bacterial cell to attach to and then begin the lytic cycle again. So that would be a virulent bacteriophage. But if we had a temperate bacteriophage, it would bind to its specific receptor on the bacterial cell, inject its DNA, but instead of doing the lytic cycle, it would do the lysogenic cycle. So it would insert the viral DNA into the bacterial cell and that viral DNA would be called the prophage. And then the bacterial cell itself would be called the lysogen. So we've got the prophage, that would be the viral DNA. And then the bacterial cell with the viral DNA in its chromosome, that's called the lysogen. And that viral DNA, that prophage, will just stay in the bacterial chromosome. And when the bacterial cell goes to divide, it gets copied along with the rest of the chromosome, gets passed on to the daughter cells, and it just stays there as long as the environment's good. But if the environment turns bad, the virus will sense that and will cut the prophage out of the chromosome and then it will enter into the lytic cycle and make new virus, lyse the bacterial cell, go find a new host cell, and start the cycle again because somehow it senses that this bacterial cell is gonna die and it says, all right, I'm out of here. I've gotta go find a new host cell and make new virus because the cell I'm in is gonna die, so I better go find a new place to live. So, so that's what it does. All right, so we've got two important results of these temperate bacteriophages doing this lysogenic cycle. Um, one of them we've already talked about before, and that's specialized transduction. 
Yeah, remember that's a form of horizontal gene transfer. Remember transduction is where the bacteriophage will pick up DNA from one bacterial cell and then transfer it to another bacterial cell. And we'll look at a picture of specialized transduction here in a minute. And then the other result that we can see because of this lysogenic cycle is something new we haven't talked about before. And this is called prophage, or sorry, phage conversion. All right, so what is this? So this is really interesting. Um, so remember we talked about a while ago, the bacterium that causes diphtheria. So that was Carini bacterium diphtheriae. And that bacterium by itself actually does not cause disease in us. So by itself, it's harmless. The only way it causes diphtheria is if it's infected with a temperate bacteriophage. And it's that temperate bacteriophage that actually carries the gene that codes for the toxin that causes diphtheria. That's really interesting. So the bacteria by itself doesn't make you sick. But if the bacteria is infected with a temperate bacteriophage, it's that virus that actually has the gene that codes for the toxin that causes diphtheria. So if the bacteria is infected with that temperate bacteriophage, then it can cause diphtheria in you. And there's some other examples of phage conversion. So for um, another example, the bacteria that causes cholera Vibrio cholerae. By itself, it won't make you sick. But it's, if it's infected by a temperate bacteriophage, that virus is carrying the gene that codes for the toxin that makes you sick with cholera. So if the bacteria, Vibrio cholerae, is infected with that temperate bacteriophage, it will code for the toxin and make you sick with cholera. But if it's not infected with that temperate bacteriophage, that virus, it won't make you sick. So that's what phage conversion is. Um, and there's a couple of other bacteria that happens too as well. Um, but that's just really interesting that it's actually the bacteriophage that's carrying the gene coding for the toxin to make you sick, and it's not actually the bacteria that's making you sick. So that's kind of interesting. Okay, let's just take a closer look at specialized transduction. So remember this occurs because of the lysogenic cycle done by these temperate bacteriophages. And remember we've got, um, in this form of horizontal gene transfer, We've got this bacterial cell that's been infected with this temperate bacteriophage, and it's inserted its viral DNA into the bacterial chromosome, so there's the prophage, and then it senses that this bacterial cell is in a bad environment, it's probably not going to survive, and so this prophage says, okay, I better get out of here, and it's just a little sloppy when it cuts the viral DNA out of the bacterial chromosome, and instead of just cutting out just the viral DNA, it also ends up cutting out the bacterial DNA, some of it that's right next to the viral DNA. So this is specialized transduction because it's not just some random gene that's gonna get picked up. It's whatever gene is next to the prophage, the viral DNA that is gonna get inserted into the um, the phage capsid here. So when it cuts out the viral DNA, we're going to cut out one of the bacterial genes as well. And that gets put into the phage capsid. And then when this
phage infects the next bacterial cell and injects the viral DNA into the next bacterial cell, it also injects this bacterial gene into this other bacterial cell. And then this will insert into the bacterial chromosome and gets inserted. And now this bacterial cell has this new gene that it didn't have before. Okay, so this gene, galactose gene, that this bacterial cell up here had is now in this other bacterial cell that didn't have it. So recombination occurred because we've combined two different pieces of DNA and now we've got some genetic variation because this bacterial cell down here on the bottom didn't have that gene before and now it does. So we've got some genetic variation that we've introduced. So, so that could be a good thing. Um, so so that would be specialized transduction, a form of horizontal gene transfer. We've got this bacteriophage picking up DNA from one bacterial cell and transferring it to another bacterial cell. And we do get some genetic variation occurring from this.